welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Soup up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. And I, I think of myself as an adventure guide, you know, taking people surfing or sailing and riding motorcycles, whatever. Uh, but I got ourselves a real Indiana Jones type adventure guide here. We have with us Stephen Ray, who's uh, responsible largely for bringing me back to the Catholic Church. His book, Crossing the Tiber, lit me up. But he's a real Indiana Jones. Uh, he, he loves the Bible, and he... Uh, has has guided so many people on I uh, into the Holy Lands and other places. I don't know, maybe a hundred times. Steve, how how many times have you been to the Holy Lands with a group? A hundred times with a group, two hundred times altogether. I, I just uh, one of these days, I'd love to go with you. I've Cindy and I have made that tour with Father Don Calloway, and was it was excellent. But I know, I know, I just, I just, I just, I, I hate to use the pun, but I dig on the fact that when you get in in there, you're digging into like even the archaeology of it, and uh, and you've you've covered you've covered so many rocks and so much terrain that probably I'm sure you've stepped many times in the places that the apostles and Jesus stepped. We did uh, before we even started leading the pilgrimages. My wife and I filmed a, a nine-part documentary series called "Footprints of God," and we covered everything from Abraham and Moses and David and Solomon and Elijah, and Elijah, um, Mary, Jesus, Peter, Paul, and the Apostolic Fathers. It's been a twenty-year project. We got one left to do on the doctors of the church, but we got nine done. When do we get to and see I, that? Where do people see that? Well, they're um, they're on Formed. Formed. Oh yes. Org. Excellent. They're also EWTN shows them periodically. Um, last time I looked, they were on Netflix, and I sell them on my website on DVDs, and those come with study guides. So we even we're talking about Abraham today. We flew to Iraq, and with my filming crew, and we filmed there for a week the the early life of Abraham, which nobody knows anything about. And we were there actually when ISIS was there, so it was kind of an exciting time. That's a bit gnarly. Yeah, um, well, we're 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 digging into uh, you know the the the, the proto evangelism. We're we're digging into the book of Genesis. Genesis in the beginning. My wife and I are really enjoying it. We're taking like a, almost a scholarly approach, digging through Genesis. We figure it'll take us two or three years to go through the just to go through this book and really dig out the gems, as you would say. Isn't it interesting, Steve, when you're reading scriptures? And you look, you're looking and you're reading and you might look, oh, I wonder what that name means. And you look up what that main name means in English or who was this person or where is this located? And then you kind of, you're digging around and you find a little fleck of gold and you go, oh, I wonder what, and you start digging there and pretty soon you find a little vein of gold and then it becomes a mother load. That's yep. what Genesis is full of, right? And that's what we're going to talk oh, about today. Absolutely. It is. That's why I had so much fun writing it and researching it all the way from going to Iraq. All the places mentioned in Genesis, I would say 90% of them I've been to. And um, like you said, Indiana Jones, actually, I get the nickname <laughs> Jerusalem Jones. Yes, absolutely. And, um, but you know, all those places in Genesis we've been to, and it makes it come alive to you when you are reading Genesis about abraham and he came from ur of the chaldees and to have been there to yeah. know where he lived and where he in fact he where he worshiped pagan deities he wasn't a christian he wasn't a jew he wasn't any of those things he was a pagan till he was 75 years old so yeah, ur, yeah. and then to visit all these places it it really makes it alive and you're you're absolutely right when you dig into the meanings of a name or the places or what was you know, one of the things I really like is discovering the context of something because it, you're hearing a story yes. about a yes. man and his family. But if you understand how they lived and where they lived and what kind of houses they lived in and what kind of food or they tents ate, or tents he lived in, right? Yes, yeah. <laughs> all of that. Then the whole story comes alive because you're in the context of it. And in the, and in that that's a, a, a lectio divina of, of sorts because you're you're meditating you're entering into the story and you think about Abra Abraham Abe Abram was his name originally right Abram. and he's in Ur of the Chaldees that's ancient Sumeria that's where that that great uh, one of the earliest 
biggest civilizations w- was there. That's where he was. And there's all these pagan gods all of around him. And suddenly, you know, God taps him yep. on the shoulder. <laughs> yep. He worshipped a god called Nana, the god of the moon. That was the patron god of Ur. You are. That's the you are is where he lived. That's down by the Persian Gulf and not too far from the Persian Gulf. And he he worshipped pagan deities and the ziggurat which was what they built to get to a high place to their god nana that that thing is still there you can still i mean i climbed up it and i talked to in the movies from there so when i'm writing this book on genesis we saw the death pits where the uh where the king died and then he buried all with his retinue all of his soldiers and don't want to be his friend right no, that's you wouldn't want to work with a king because they found some graves that had as many as 80 people and they were all arranged in, around the king. So that when the king died, all the people who worked for him died, too, and were buried with him. Well, that's a kind so of good. When, that's a kind of good way to make sure no one's, you know, all the court intrigued that they're not trying to kill you. Cause, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yep. yeah. So when Abraham hears, take your son, your only son, whom you love, and give him as a sacrifice, human sacrifice was nothing new to Abraham. That was part mm, of his life mm. in his pagan world. In, and in fact, that, 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 that we're, gonna, we're kind of skipping ahead on the story, but in fact, that moment, uh, besides all the spiritual applications out there, was saying to him, we don't do this. You know, we're yeah. ending that type of thing. Well, let's talk about Abe, not, not, not Abraham, Abram, this uh, one of the first, you know, the, the patriarchs. Uh, Let's talk about his story, but let's talk about it in light of what it sh- it's it's foreshadowing into the the new the, the the New Testament. Okay, a lot of people think of Genesis just as the creation story, but that's only the first three chapters. The whole story really is about Abraham, and then Isaac, and then Jacob, and then Joseph. These patriarchs. The majority of the book is about them, starting with chapter eleven. And Abram lived in Ur of the Chaldees, and it was a very wealthy place. I mean, he was he was massively wealthy. He had flocks and herds and 318 men who worked for him. But he didn't have any son. He didn't have any children. And he's 75 years old. And his name was a very cruel name. It's Abram, which means father. So if he meets somebody and say, hello, what's your name? Abram. Oh, father, where's your kids? Well, I don't have any. And yes. Then, and then when he gets the covenant, it even becomes worse because then the name is Abraham, which means father of nations. Um, yeah. And he still doesn't have any kids. But he lived in this land that was very opulent and wealthy. And it says in the book of, of uh, Joshua that your fathers came mm. from a land where they served other gods. Mm-hmm. And somewhere along the line, God spoke to Abraham. He's looking for someone to start over again because Adam and Eve screwed it up and then Noah and then everybody went back into sin again. They built a tower of Babel. And so God's saying, I need a, one man that I can really use as a foundation, somebody that's going to believe me, who's going to do what I say, and I'm going to start over a, new, a whole new covenant and I'm going to build on this one man. And he found this guy named Abram. He's already 75 years old. And he says, Abram, so that, that's a lesson, though, to people right now, people yeah. that are uh, 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 older. This is your time. This is your prime time because yeah, you've got yeah. all this knowledge and wisdom and skill. Apply it. God has a plan for you. Abram, Moses, all those dudes that were that were older when God called them. Don't. Yep. It's not a time for you guys to sit on a shelf. Get up, teach catechism, run for school council. I don't know. Do something Absolutely. for the Lord. Absolutely. Get get up and get busy. <laughs> As I agree with you completely. We have no age discrimination around here, and certainly uh, the Bible has no age discrimination. So he, what is interesting about this guy is, imagine Barry, you're seventy five years old, and you own land, and you own flocks and sheep and goats, and you have three hundred and eighteen men working for you. And everything is going along great, except you don't have a son. And you're worshiping these gods and everything is fine. All your ancestors are buried there. You've got business connections. And then all of a sudden, this God you've never heard of before comes and says, I am the God uh, uh, that created the world. And I want you to leave your homeland and go to a place I'll show you. Abraham says, well, am I going to have a deed to the land? I want to see it on the map. How far is it? What kind of a mortgage am I going to have and health insurance when I get there? He didn't ask for any of that. Mm -hmm. He just said, where do you want me to go? And God says, go until I tell you to stop. And here's the, here's the, yeah, go ahead. Here's the thing. 
Um, yeah, it, it, it took a personal relationship with God every day to say, now which where am I going to go? It wasn't like there's yeah. a map. And the other thing about it is think about when he left his land, he never owned any land again except for what? There's one place that he bought. What was it? That and was you, a tomb to bury his wife in. And you've that, probably and been was, there. You've probably oh, been yeah, there. Oh, yeah, many times. And it's, and it's tough to get there. It's a Barry, cave, it's, actually, right? Well, yeah, and it's down in the uh, Palestinian West Bank city of Hebron, and it's in a rough area. So he it's gave really up everything. He gave up everything. The only thing he cared about yeah. uh, was his wife. You know, let me have a yeah. place for her. Yeah. Now, let, here's, there's a poem. Oh, you know what? We got to take a break. Um, okay, God, okay, we're already, good. We'll be right back. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Now you can journey with other men on the adventure of a lifetime, growing in manly virtue through Bear's Man Cave community in our three-year school of manliness. Join at deepadventure.com. Better yet, you can lead your own sons through the same compelling video, audio, and written content. Can you imagine how much deeper your relationship with your dad could have been and how much more you could have learned and pitfalls you might have avoided if your dad had a tool like this to help to draw you both into a deeper, life-changing discussion. Now you have a trigger that you can pull that will take you into gritty discussions with other men and with your sons at deepadventure.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. You can gain traction in the virtues in my book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue. And you can be inspired by my personal testimony of heartache and triumph with my book, A Surfing Guide to the Soul, both newly published by Sophia and available at our web store, deepadventure.com and also on amazon.com. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha. Welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. I've got to tell everybody we're excited about our new book, 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? Sophia's coming out with it. You can pre-order it right now on Amazon. We'd love for you to go and uh, get the book for you and for your, all the, you know, your friends, women, buy it for your husband, men, buy it for your sons. And when you buy it, be sure and do a book review because it really elevates it then in the Amazon arena and helps us to get the word out even more. So 12 rules for manliness, where have all the cowboys gone? I could almost say I based it on Steve Ray's life, our guest today. Okay, so now we're talking about Abraham. We're in the book of Genesis. Abe! And, he, and God's in the name of Abraham. And now he's, he's moseying all over the place because God doesn't give him a map. He says, I will give you a lamp to your feet. You know, I'm going to show you where to step next. Everybody wants that comfort. Okay, God, you know, what's, uh, what's the plan? And God just says, well, get up in the morning, have a prayer time, and I'll tell you <laughs> for that day. Well, you know, this was, the, the distance was 1,600 miles. And when you're traveling with flocks and herds and children, because he had all these employees working with him to handle his flocks and his herds, they could travel roughly six to eight miles a day. So calculate six to eight miles a day going 1,600 miles. That's and a looking long for, And looking for water all along. I mean, that's like... Everywhere. Water, yeah. You went everywhere. Water was the crucial and thing. So they those... went up the Tigris and Euphrates River, and then they came back down the Tigris and Euphrates River up into what's today in Turkey. It's called the Fertile Crescent. But what I really like is there's this poem that was written, and I'm just paraphrasing it, but 
God tells Abraham to pack up everything and move. And Abraham says, you haven't spoken to anyone for four generations. And now like thunder a, on a clear day, you boom out your commands to me. He said, you want me to leave the tombs of my ancestors, to leave the land and my families. You want me to pack up and go to some mumbled nowhere that you won't even tell me what it is. You come very lately, Lord. You come very late. But my camels will leave in the morning. Amen. Oh, now, I may not. I'll be hanging out, but I'll set my camels. No, but I mean, that's the thing about the, the, the thing about uh, others, too, in Scripture is they would set out in the morning. They didn't delay when God spoke to them that, you know, they arose and did it. Yep. And, and again, this is why he's the father of faith, because he did what God said without ever complaining or doubting. For example, imagine you've got 318 men who work for you and God tells them, this is later a little bit, that I'm going to give you a sign of the covenant. And Abraham says, finally, I'm going to get something. I don't own any land. I don't even have a kid yet, but you're finally going to give me a sign of the covenant. What is it, God? And he hands him a flint knife and he says, circumcise yourself and all of the men with you. Now, Abraham, he calls his guys all together and he hey says, guys. guys you want to hear the good news first or the bad news god's made a covenant with us but here's the sign of the covenant and it said that the knife flashed and all of the men were circumcised that day this is obedience to god for something that man hey. I, I mean when i tell the story in an audience guys are always crossing their legs and going oh, oh, oh. i didn't want to think about it and didn't they say didn't doesn't the scripture say that he, he um obedience with god and he counted it as righteousness Yes, but also he Abram believed God, and yep. And, and also, yes. Abram is called, not just that he was obedient; he's called the friend of God. Three times in the Bible, he's called the friend of God. And, and Jesus said, "You are my friends if you do what I command you." Because when yes. God commands us, it's something good. It's 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 good, and it's all about love, even though we may yep. not understand how. Right, and you don't know how, and Abraham didn't know at the time what all this was going to bring about, but it brought about a son who's going to then die on a cross you know Abra isaac and then the whole line god chooses all the way down to time of christ christ is of the seed of abraham abraham mm -hmm. would just think if he would have known the whole story i'm believing god but he didn't even know the whole but he story. seemed to he seemed to know god he seemed to get who who yeah. god is and you know another thing that's funny is they say that abram was given the name abraham and Sarai was given the name Sarah. And so in both right. of their names, uh, he put a ha-ha, right? If you put those two H's. H's. Sarah. And, and, and Sarah, yeah. Sarah laughed when, was it Sarah that laughed when the angel said? Twice. And she goes, and, and then the angel says, but you laughed. And she goes, no, I didn't. And he goes, oh, but yes, you did. <laughs> so God has a sense of humor. He allows us to, too. But, uh, yeah, it is something, huh? In, in her well, old age, beyond menopause, and she, he says, you're going to have a baby. Yep. And um, and she laughed, <laughs> just kind of like yeah, like, are you kidding me? I'm gonna have a baby. And then it's funny because when she did have the baby, then, and, she, and like you said, she said I didn't laugh, and he said yes, you did. But this time next year you'll have a son. And then when the son was born, she laughed again. But it was a joyful laugh. Can mm -hmm. you believe what God did for me? She laughs, and she named the boy Isaac, which means laughter. Isn't that beautiful? And so we can have joy in the Lord. And, you know, I'm gonna, there's someone listening to right now that God has prompted them to do something. And it's going to kind of make them, they know what I'm talking about. And they're kind of like having a little bit of a laugh right now. But there's, there's, there's joy when you, when you get that tap on the shoulder or that nudge. Or in sometimes, ha, huh, it's a push. And you obey the Lord. Um, that's where the joy is, is in watching God do yeah. stuff, you know? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. And, and by the way, he's the only one in the Bible called the friend of God. Isn't that amazing? Yep. Others talk to God face to face like Moses, but only Abraham is called the friend of God. And you know, interesting enough, all the kings in the ancient times had officers like 
the royal steward, queen mother. They had all these, the, the captain of their armies. The, the, the wine, the, 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 king, the cup bearer, the most important one. Exactly. <laughs> who tested to make and, sure it wasn't poisoned. every king also had an officer who was called the friend of the king. Oh, really? And the friend of the king came into his room before he's even out of bed in the morning. And he could talk, he, he was somebody the king could just be honest and talk to and ask for advice. When Jesus said, you are now my friends, if you understand the context, he's saying, I'm going to consult with you now. You have a right to wake me up in the morning and we can talk. You're going to be like the friend of the king, that office. Yeah, he said, I, so won't call he, you ser I won't call you servants anymore. I will no. call you friends because the servant doesn't know what the master is about. Right. But he, they're gonna, going to know because they are now the friend of the king. And that's an official title in a kingdom. I didn't know that. That's so cool. Yeah. That's why we love having Steve Ray on. Steve, uh, for a moment, just take a break and tell us CatholicConvert.com, right? Yep, CatholicConvert.com. And, and your new book, Genesis, on the book of Genesis. Okay, carry on. Well, it's um, his name change is also significant because when today we, our names don't mean so much. Bear, I think, is pretty significant, but I mean, names don't always mean that much. But in the biblical times, a name was associated with something very intimate to you or about you. For example, Isaac was named Laughter because his mother laughed when he was born. But you have Abram, whose name is changed to Abraham, when God gave him a new dignity, a new calling, a new office. He's going to do something new with him, so he there's, gives him a new there's name. There's only one person in the New Testament that God gave a new name to. Who was that? It was Peter. Peter. Yeah, and he yep, gave him Simon. this office of prime minister. Yep, and that's what it means, rock. He's become the rock. Now, some people think Paul got a new name. He didn't. He had two names from birth. That was a Roman name and a Jewish name. But um, Jacob, also Abraham's grandson. Yes, he got a new name. He gets a new name. Israel, which um, one who wrestles with God, that means. Oh, I love and that Jacob story. Always, I love that story. It's, well, did, he's did, always wrestling with God. Didn't Jacob you know, wrestle with his brother even in the womb? Yes, who was it? It, it did. It, and his mother said, oh, if this is the way it is, why am I even going to have kids? <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, <laughs> it, my daughter's pregnant right now. I mean, we got, we got 20 grandkids, but she's pregnant right now. And I just can't even imagine, you know, because you watch your stomach, and you see boom, 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 that baby moving around. <laughs> and there's there. two Can guys in their UFC done? fighting inside, yeah, it, inside it, her it, womb. Yeah, know, tag team fighting in, in her <laughs> womb. But it's uh, Jacob. The name means crook, supplanter. Devious. Yes. And he was. And it's and the difference between the two, Abram, when God said to do something, he said, OK, I'll do it. When he told Jacob to do something, Jacob says, well, if you take care of me and if you bring me back to the land and if you keep your promises, then you'll be my God. Yeah. He's negotiating with God even all the time. Yeah. Abram never negotiated. He just said, yes, Lord, of course, here I am. Jacob is always negotiating. Well, let's talk about now about this great moment with, uh, with now Abram did negotiate with God, I believe, uh, when it was he was going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. Oh, yeah, he did yeah. do a little bit of negotiating, but not on his behalf. But for someone else, you know, it, that it, is it's a accessory classic. prayer. When, when we talk about prayer, anybody who teaches on prayer goes to that passage as an example of intercession when you're interceding for someone else. Abram was a master. Lord, forgive me. I, I am treading on thin water, uh, ice here. I know I am walking dangerously, but may I ask you one more question? If there are 10 righteous, will you destroy the whole city? <laughs> well, we got to take a break. We're with Steve Ray. Steve, I'm sorry, but, you know, we may need to get you back again already. Because I mean, we, we, we were going to talk about the rest of the book of Genesis today. We, we haven't, we've barely gotten any traction because it's so deep. <laughs> Steve Ray, CatholicConvert.com, his new book on the book of Genesis. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We'll be right back with more. This is Daniel Laboon Markham with another episode of Country Up. Death. Some folks frequently walk through the valley of the shadow of death. And I suppose I've brushed death more than most, and less than some others. At the tender age of 12, I pulled my cousin, age 10, out of the cold water of the Columbia River. He was a goner. I wept. A year later, my pa, who had just turned 58, died from his third heart attack. I watched him heaving for air on his deathbed. That weren't pretty. Worked as a deckhand on the Columbia River Bar, the graveyard of the Pacific. The Grim Reaper had me in his crosshairs more than once. 
It was from the same waters as a young man I wrestled three bodies out of the pounding surf on Benson Beach. As a pastor, I was often called to folks on their deathbed. I learned to look forward to those times, strange as that may seem. As death comes close, folks get serious-like about themselves, their lives, and eternity. One such time was with an old farmer by the name of Bob Fredenberg. Now, Bob was a crusty old codger. Whenever he came to town, he was wearing that same pair of tattered and dirty coveralls, always with a servant of cow manure on at least one of his boots. Talk with a loud, nasally twang, never a sentence lacking a cuss word or two. I was straight with Bob that day about death and eternity. Bob opened his heart to the Lord that day. As he did, Bob's demeanor in the room changed from the cold power of death to the glow of godly light. This is Daniel the Boone Markham at countryup.org on a journey a few miles this side of heaven. We invite our mama bears to join with us at deepadventure.com. You'll have access to all of the Long Ride Home TV shows even before they air on EWTN. Plus, three years of the shareable Ocean Sunrise daily catechism videos. Plus, at deepadventure.com, a 20% discount at our online store with all of our great t-shirts and clothes and books and rosaries and medals and all kinds of accessories. You'll also get an autographed copy of Bear's latest book, and for a limited time, a Catholic biker stuffed teddy bear. All at deepadventure.com. Come on, Mama Bears, let's hear you roar. Did you know that each Saturday morning you can receive the shareable YouTube video version of the Bear Wozniak Adventure in our inspiring weekly newsletter, even before it airs on the radio or hits the podcast apps? Never miss another episode. You can even binge watch Bear's inspiring guests. Think about the impact you can have sharing these videos with your friends. Go to deepadventure.com and click the subscribe button. Be the kind of man that when he gets out of bed in the morning, the devil says, oh no, he's up. Go to deepadventure.com and invite Bear to speak. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I want to remind you again, our new book uh, by Sophia Publishing is coming out in September, but please pre-order it now. Uh, I actually like it if you buy it on Amazon instead of on my website, because on Amazon then it gets, and especially if you buy it and then you give a, uh, an endorsement if you review the book, it really helps uh, Amazon go, oh, this is a good book. We better start promoting it. So uh, 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? Women, <laughs> get this for your uh, sons that are heading off to college or heading, heading into high school. Get it for your, your, your husbands. I get it for your brothers, your brother-in-laws. Um, it's a powerful book. I wrote book. an endorsement for it. Well, Steve Ray wrote an endorsement, everybody. So what can I say? It's got to be a great... In fact, I, I always tell Steve I based it on his life. But it, it really is uh, an inter interesting book because it challenges people in... Um, it, it encourages men to have a personal creed and a personal code that they live by. And it's almost like fatherly advice, uh, although it's meant for men of all ages. And it gets pretty gritty and it gets pretty rules, uh, pretty gnarly at some point when we talk about how a man needs to be dangerous. Hey, Steve, when you're out traveling, doing all these things, there's a certain amount of, a, you have got to be a protector while you're doing that. You've got to have your head on a swivel while you're traveling into some of these locations, don't you? Well, I do, and I, my wife is always with me, and um, I'm I'm a very chivalrous, protective guy. I always try to make life easy for her. But yeah, you're right. It's um, and, and just travel today is difficult anywhere, even in an airport today. You never know what's going to happen in New York Airport or Detroit Airport, and then you get well, over into other parts of the world like well, Iraq. And let's talk about Iraq and Abraham. Didn't Abraham at one point uh, say that his wife was his sister? Yes. To, <laughs> which was uh, you know to it's try to get out of the truth to try to get yeah, out of it, yeah go ahead he tried to get out of trouble that speaking king of protecting it, his wife you know he didn't he because he said sarah was beautiful and um they were afraid he was afraid they're going to kill him and take his wife so he mm. said it was his sister and in a way it was true because she was his half sister 
Yeah, right, right. But yeah, she so, was also his wife, which he didn't tell. So. Yeah. So let, anyway, let's dig into the, the whole the Abraham. Thing. I think the the place you want to leap to, uh, it seems to me, is 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 uh, is Mount Moriah, Golgotha. Yes, let's do that because here now Isaac is probably about fifteen years old. Abraham is probably 115 years old. They lived longer back then. And imagine now this is your only son and you're, and he's your constant companion. Imagine, Bear, you, you only have one son and you've been waiting for him for 100 years and finally you've got him and you're just gonna adore this kid. And then one day out of the blue, God comes to you and says, Abraham, Abraham. And he responded, here I am, Lord. By the way, that's, and if, if God ever calls you, that's the response, the biblical here response. I am. 23 times in the Bible. That's how obedient men responded. Here I am, Lord. Mm. And God says, take your son, your only son whom you love. Mm. And think now, about what verse yeah. does that... Oh, does that remind you of something? Yeah, in this the is New my Testament? beloved son in whom I am well pleased. God, yes. God, God the Father with his son. John yes. 3 16 so it just it <clears throat> echoes that and there's a reason why it echoes that for take your son your only son whom you love and I can imagine Abraham arguing with God well I have two sons mm. <laughs> Ishmael and Isaac well take your son the one through Sarah well that's Isaac the one you love I love them both take this one but because so, mm, yeah go ahead and why did have a little why dialogue did, going why on. didn't he want to have why was Ishmael rejected in that for that moment because it wasn't through sarah it was not the son of promise that god is going to do it it was actually Abraham. a son of doubt because because of yeah. doubt he went and had uh right. relations with his sarah concubine. doubted and he obeyed sarah and yeah. look Ooh. at the trouble it caused look adam at the did adam, adam did it too <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know one of the things these guys in the bible they weren't perfect i David, love that David is called a man after God's own heart, and yet he committed adultery and murdered. Well, look and at yet, it. Moses murdered also. Yes. And, I mean, and God the didn't is, whitewash the, the patriarchs, the heroes. He showed them as flawed. You know why, why they could be right with God is because not only were they great sinners, but they were great repenters, and they repented mm. of their sins, and they straightened out their lives after they did that. But anyway, Abraham, mm. he, he, can you imagine that being said to you? But here's a couple of things that are interesting. God does not specifically command Abraham to do that. In the Hebrew, the word do this is softened almost to the point where it says, will you do this for me? Mm. It's not a direct command. It's more of a request. And that makes mm. it all the more poignant because Abraham says to God, I will not only do what you require of me, command of me, but I'll also do what you wish, even mm -hmm. to giving my son. That's that's what friendship is. Yeah, I'm doing it not out of uh, commitment and obedience, right? but out of devotion and love. Exactly. And why does he have to take them to Mount Moriah? That's a three-day walk away. They live in Beersheba. I've been there a lot of times, too. They live in Beersheba. That's 50 miles south of Jerusalem. And that would take you three days or two and a half days to walk. And up a if big hill, right? From, <laughs> it's a long way, yeah. And so why go there? Because it says in, in Chronicles that Solomon built his temple on Mount Moriah. So what does that tell us? Mount Moriah is the top of Jerusalem. Abraham had to carry, walk with his son all the way to the top of Jerusalem to offer him as a sacrifice. Solomon built his temple there on Jerusalem. And then 2,000 years after Abraham, another father with his only begotten son brought him to the same place and offered him as a sacrifice. So the whole story of Abraham and Isaac is a picture of God the Father who's going to offer his son on the same mountain, the same place in Jerusalem. Well, let me ask you another question. This, I, I, I'm forgetting this. Uh, Melchizedek, the priest Melchizedek. Yep. The prince, the also prince of, from Salem, Jerusalem. From, yeah, I mean, the, 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 that, that unique priesthood. So the priesthood was being established on that mountain. You know, yep. the, yeah. This mountain in Jerusalem is this. It has a, a, a very amazing history, Eucharistic history, because Melchizedek yes. brings out bread and wine. He's yes. the priest and the king representing Jesus, bringing bread and wine, giving it to the people of God. Well, that's Eucharistic imagery. A yes. priest bringing. 
And so, and then Jesus in the upper room gives bread and wine and becomes his body and blood, and he spills his blood on on uh, the top of Jerusalem. Mm. So this is, but I, and then people say, well, why would God, how could God ask Abraham to kill his son? That just is like fingernail scratching on a chalkboard for us. That seems like so immoral. What God would ever do that? I would just tell him, you're not the true God. If you ask me to do that, I'm not going to serve you. You're not, I'm going back to Ur. I'm not going to follow you anymore. But God never intended Abraham to kill his son, and Abraham knew he wouldn't have to. Because he knew, he knew. He even said when his, now if, you don't see Isaac fighting and wrestling for his life either. He asked his father, where's the sacrifice? And I love Ab Abraham's response. God will provide. It will the Lord will provide the lamb. And then he names that place Jehovah Yireh, which means at this place the Lord will provide. Provide what? The real sacrifice 2,000 years later. But God, I think what God was saying, Bear, was you lived in Ur where there was human sacrifice. It was common. Humans were sacrificed there. You would have done this for Nana. Yes. But now that you have chosen me to be your God, would you do for me what you would have done for Nana, even giving your own son? And I think it was that test, and Abraham said yes. But it's also, but Abraham knew he wouldn't have to, because not only did he say the Lord's going to provide the, the sacrifice, but when he talked to his two servants at the bottom of the mountain, he said, the lad and I will go worship, and we will return. Ah, I never th realized that. That's awesome. And think, think about this, too. Isaac really would have had to, to be on that altar. He was offering himself, too. He was. He, he, Bear, when I made the movie on Abraham, I built an altar out in the out in the desert there. I built it with stones. I put a bunch of wood on top of it, and I had a ram. And I dare, even you're bigger and stronger than I am. You couldn't pick up a ram and throw him up there on your own. I had a ram. I brought one. But it took three guys to get that, that big sheep up on top of that mm -hmm. pile of wood. Abraham at that age could never have gotten Isaac up on there by himself, especially if Isaac was resisting him. Right. But Isaac is a picture of Christ who was a willing servant. He mm -hmm. cooperated with his father. But let me ask you this question. I bet he wasn't laughing. Oh, no, he wasn't <laughs> even though laughing he, at Even though time. he was the child of laughter. This isn't funny. But, but, you know, but seriously, the thing that I think about it is who, who would have it been harder on? Isaac to offer his life or for a father to offer his son's life. You think about Jesus and what he did on the cross, but think about what God the Father did in giving his son. Yep. Well, and which was harder, thought, yeah. And in my book on oh, Genesis, we, I- Oh, dude, dude, we gotta take a break again. Okay, I just look at my I'll clock. Come back. Uh, sorry. Yeah, it just shows the, the, the utmost of God the Father's love and, and Jesus' love. We're talking with Steve Ray, author of the new book, uh, uh, the uh, called Genesis. It's his beautiful, in-depth, powerful, insightful, inspirational book on the book of Genesis. And his, his website is catholicconvert.com. We'll be right back. People love our EWTN TV show, Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak. Thanks to you, the show has won four different tally awards. And now, instead of waiting each week for the next episode to air, you can actually binge watch our show and even share it with your friends when you go to deepadventure.com and join the Mama Bears or the Man Cave. Along with all the other benefits, you get total access to all the seasons of our aired episodes, plus instant access to episodes that won't even air for several months. Long Ride Home with Bear Wastick, a great way to communicate the gospel in a gritty enough way that even tough men will stop and watch at deepadventure.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. When you go to the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure YouTube channel, you get access to all of our free playlists, including hundreds of episodes of the Bear Wozniak adventure. 
plus the three-year journey through the whole catechism in our Ocean Sunrise Catechism series. And you even get short clips and live streaming of Baron Cindy's Adventures in Paradise videos. Go to YouTube and subscribe to the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure channel. Are you still listening? I thought we warned you to change to an easy listening station. Well, you asked for it. Here is more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Aloha, welcome back. I'm going to bring this up every, every, at every break about the new book, 12 Rules for Manliness. We have worked so hard on this book, 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? Uh, with Sophia Publishing. Took me a couple of years because I was interweaving writing this book while I was doing, uh, while we were filming Long Ride Home and so many other things were going on. I think I was fighting cancer, two muscles being detached and having to reattach them from surfing uh, wipeouts and uh, all kinds of stuff. So it was really a book written in the midst of tribulation. And I think maybe that's why it's so special to me. But it's almost like a fatherly advice to young men and it's an encouragement and challenge to, to older men about, about developing their own career creed and their own personal code and uh you know it it, it gets um you know um how to how to dream how to dream God, how to know god's dream for you how to know god's plan for your life how to you know one of the chapters is uh how a man how a man uh treats a woman defines him so it's just kind of in-depth stuff uh, about a relationship with god but also about our just our normal just our walk with god and so i have a a, a great example of that of a, of a cowboy here with us his hat isn't quite a cowboy hat but close to it we have uh, steve ray with us who's who's written a new book called genesis and we're talking about abram so here's here's god the father uh, offering his son and i want to can i ask you a question differentiate the catholic view of that uh, uh, versus the, the Protestant view, which is that God turned his back on his son and punished his son uh, in a substitutionary fashion as opposed to what this Catholic version of is, how Jesus was raising us up. He, was, he took on our humanity, which means he took on all of our sins. But it wasn't that just Jesus was being punished by his father. It was us who were punishing. I mean, can you just... Let's let's clarify that. It was us that, that put sacrifice. him to the cross. It, it yeah. was us that put him on the cross, and and he willingly went, and he said, "My God, my God, why have you forsaken me?" Because at that moment, and I think it happened at the Garden of Gethsemane. When mm. I take my groups there, I always do a talk there about this. Mm. That when he said, "Let it's this cup pass from me, but not my will, but yours be done." I think at that moment is when all the sins of the world fell on oh, him. From that yes. moment on, he was now. Yeah. He was not a sinner. He was a sin bearer. Yes. And he took all of our sins into his own body. Yes. That's why the blood and his soul, out soul and everything. Yeah. And, yeah. and that's, and you know, it's in a garden. Isn't it interesting that Adam and Eve brought mm -hmm. sin into the world in a garden? And mm. it was in a garden of Gethsemane that Jesus took all the sins back on himself. They, they make sure you know that it's in a garden. And he went right and then. Mm -hmm. that, the cross and the tomb are also in a garden, John tells us. They're mm. also in a garden. So he takes the sins of the world on in the garden of gethsemane but then he he actually pays a penalty for our sins and spills his blood for us in the garden but, where the cross is but god, god the father never turned his back on us and he didn't abandon no, him. he was he quoting do that. a psalm about that his in his inner anguish and it really points to a couple of things about jesus he is all god and he is all man how many wills does jesus have he has two as 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 as, as the divine son of, of the father he has that godly will but he also has that human will and there's that 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 very real struggle within him but i want to tell you something i meant to mention it last time when they were kicked out of the garden they were kicked out of the garden because god said these words thou shall not eat of the that the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil but my 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 the other night when cindy and i were reading um genesis she said you know what in 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 the Garden of Eden, he said, thou shalt not eat. But at the cross and at the Last Supper, and prior to that, Jesus said, unless you eat. Right. So you shalt not eat, but you must eat. You must have that Eucharistic uh, body, yep. blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus. Yep. 
Yeah, it's all fascinating, the whole story. Oh, and another thing about them going up the mountain together, and in that passage it says, and the two of them went on together. It uh, just is such a bond of father and the son going on together, and you can see God the father and his son, and they went on together. But mm. when, but what was the curse of the earth? The curse of the earth was that it would bring thorns and thistles, right? And make oh life difficult. Oh my gosh, he wore thorns. What thorns. did Jesus wear to the what did he wear? He wore the sign of the curse of the earth. So he oh, was redeeming, my goodness. He wasn't just redeeming us. He was redeeming the earth from the curse of Adam. Oh, and, beautiful. And when when the ram was back in Abraham's time, what was the ram's head stuck in a thorn bush? Thorn right? What bush. was Jesus's head? The oh, substitute, the goodness. real one. Jesus's head is stuck in a thorn bush when he goes. It said that Isaac carried the wood of the sacrifice on his back. Jesus the carried the wood of the sacrifice yeah. on his back. And you know, you you, you were thinking, you were, I've, lo I've lost my train of thought. Go, go well, can on. I take that imagery yeah, a little bit it. more? Yeah, you, yeah go ahead. You said you like the typology. Okay, now I'm going to, and by the way, that's the first time the word love is used in the Bible, is when God says, take your son, your only son whom you love. That's the first time the word love is used in the Bible. It was wow. reserved by the Holy Spirit for the love of a father for his only begotten wow. son. The second time the word love is used, I'll get to it here. Uh, it was Jacob. It was uh, it was Israel. Yes, 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 you're right. Yeah. And so God the Father, he, <laughs> um, he takes Isaac back home to his place. Isaac needs a bride. He, Abraham sends his unnamed servant, we don't know his name, back to his own people to find a bride. She agrees to come. He brings her back, and she sees Isaac. Isaac loves, second time the word love yeah, is used Yeah, that's right, Isaac, yeah. Isaac loves his bride. He wed her and took her into his tent. Here's a picture of God the Father when later, now his son is risen from the dead and he takes him back to heaven. Mm. And then he sends his unnamed servant. The Holy Spirit doesn't have a name. He's just holy and he's a Isn't spirit. Isn't that interesting? I often wonder, I always, uh, uh, you know, think about that, that he doesn't have a name. He's the Holy Spirit. Uh, He's the Holy Spirit, and he sends his unnamed servant back to his own people in Jerusalem oh. to find a bride for his son. Wow. The church says yes, and then the unnamed servant brings us back to heaven where we wed Jesus. Wow! And that's the second, the first time love of father for his his only begotten son. Second time is J Isaac uh, with love with his wife, or Jesus in love with his bride. And Jacob loved Rachel, right? Yep. And so so you guys, what are we talking about here? We're talking with Steve Ray, CatholicConvert.com. Yep. Yep. You guys, get his book, Genesis, and we're trying to say, get you know what? Get this really cool new Ascension Bible that Jeff Cavins and Ascension put together. Get the Adventure Bible. Get the Genesis book that, that just came out uh, from, it's Ignatius, right? P published yep. your book. And also, and read I made them the side movie. by side. And the movie? And I have the 90 minute movie that we filmed in Iraq and Palestinian areas in Turkey. The whole life of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We're, we filmed it all. We're on trying location. to get Catholics to get your Bibles out, man. It's really cool. Yep. We go to Mass, or we read the Liturgy of the Hour, and we're getting scripture. But it's so cool to have like this. this, this you know, well, you, now this is my newest Bible. In fact, my other Bibles kind of got worn out. I was just been waiting for a really cool Bible, and I got this. I've got three of these adventure Bibles now. I love them so much. But get a Bible that becomes your friend. You know, like, men, when you hold a, a gun in your hand and it just fits just perfect, like you know that's your gun, or you have a car that just is your car, or you have a surfboard that just, it's your surfboard, get a Bible that you feel like that about and get become friends with it. But why not start in, 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 in Genesis uh, and, and Exodus and 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 get, but get get this book Genesis by Steve Ray and let it be your companion. We got a couple minutes. Where where you want to go with it, Steve? Well, the whole story of Genesis doesn't end with Abraham, but it does say that God tested him, and then it, he was never tested again. Well, God you know, said, "Okay, I'll, he never was tested no, again. I, he no. lived it." happy old life and it talks about that testing you'll be you'll be tested in the furnace of much humiliation i believe it says in the book of sirach but i remember as a kid my dad uh, got a shovel a brand new shovel and he took it out to the backyard and he started a fire and i said what are you doing he said i'm testing the steel and he or whatever it was made out of steel i guess and when he put it into the fire he didn't test anything he just put it in the fire but what he said what it means by testing is it solidifies the sharpness of that edge so it doesn't right. dull as much. So the right. testing is an affirming and a strengthening and, and a solid positioning 
of you when you go through testing count it all joy because you're being yep. you're being solidly affirmed okay now you got one minute left steve <laughs> well that's so you got the whole story then of isaac he doesn't do anything heroic he's kind of a link in the chain but He's I, I, he's not impressive. And then comes Jacob in the story of Genesis. There's and a Jacob lot of stuff. To be, the e, Isaac and yeah, go ahead. And then Jacob and, and, and I, Esau. And Jacob yeah. is the most fascinating character. Yeah. And he is just the whole story of Jacob. And I loved writing about him when I when he died. I felt so terrible because I mean I'd gotten to know him not only in the movie well, we made about him all on location, well, he, but he, we, we got to cut. We got you got to come back. And then there's Joseph. The last 10 yeah. chapters are on Joseph. So you got to come and back. Joseph is another picture of Christ. You, there's well, nothing you ever see Joseph do wrong. No well, sin ever in Joseph. But well, look at this. When Jacob, when Jacob and J Esau were wrestling, I believe Jake, Esau's arm came out and they tied a scarlet thread around his arm. And then he was pulled back in by the usurper, the wrestler, and Jacob came out. But he was, Jake was considered the younger brother because, because... Yes. Okay, Esau so, was the first one right. Out. So, so you look at the younger brother situation here. It's through Jacob that the blessing comes. It's not through right. the oldest brothers of Joseph. It's through the youngest brother Joseph. Uh, uh, Joseph. And then, if you look even at at the nature of man, uh, you know, we have a body and a spiritual soul. Uh, but when we're born again, it's our spiritual soul that's born again first. It's the younger brother that, and then the older brother, the body, is redeemed when we, when we die. Oh, my gosh. I, I don't even know if I went on a tangent that's accurate. But so much to contemplate. Steve Ray, uh, CatholicConvert.com, thank you for joining us. Until next time, may the breath of the Holy Spirit al aloha you. And my, my wife says for us to sit, make the sign of a cross in, in uh, Hawaiian, me ka inoa o kamakua ke 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 me ke ke ohana hemalele. In the name of the Father, and Son, and the Holy Spirit. Aloha! Thanks for listening to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Find more manly conversation at the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure YouTube channel. Subscribe and ring the bell.